<laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. We are live. It is time to start 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is What is in Your Bag, uh, our third iteration. So we are on our um, handlebar bag uh, today. We'll be unpacking our handlebar bag, which is super exciting. My name is Neil. I am our host. Um, and if you haven't realized yet, we just started a YouTube channel on bikepacking.com um, where we are basically publishing a bunch of reviews, uh, resources. Uh, it's really fresh. So um, hopefully you can enjoy the content that's on there now. Uh, there's much more to, uh, to come. So today is super exciting because we have a special guest alongside Miles Arbor, Joe Cruz, Jess Daddio. Uh, Devin Cowens is here. Hey, Devin, thanks so much. Hey, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got a group of five now, which it, the setup is a little different. Obviously, uh, you're not going to see um, a big uh, or like a four screen. Um, uh, yeah, you're not going to see four faces right in uh, on your screen, uh, which is fine. But um, Sweet. So basically you guys all, um, or at least a lot of you all filled out our survey, uh, basically uh, telling us what style of bikepacking handlebar bag you chose or that you typically run with. Um, and we wanted to kind of share the top three results uh, just so that maybe you guys can stick around for the, the remaining results at the end of our live session. Um, so I wanted to start with number three, which is the classic saddlebar, saddlebag top opening system, um, which it, I think Devin actually has a bag like this, but um, it's more of like a Swift Industries Zeitgeist bag or a, a BXB teardrop bag, which is really awesome. Um, they're a lot bigger than standard handlebar bags. Um, they can fit the kitchen sink, I, I think. Um, and that, that whole system, um, or that 212 of you all voted for that, which is really great, uh, which was roughly 12.9%. Um, and then for number two, it was the dry bag harness, which uh, this is what I'm gonna be unpacking for you all today. This is the Revelate Designs Pronghorn. And 26.6% uh, of you all voted for that, and that was 437 votes. It's a lot of people. Uh, and then the number one style of bikepacking bag was the bikepacking style handlebar roll. Uh, basically, the Revelate Design Suite roll was like the first bikepacking uh, system like this out there. Uh, I remember getting mine like ages ago. Miles, you have that style. What is that one called again? Um, this is the Bedrock Bags Moab handlebar bag. The Moab, yep. Uh, I know Bedrock makes an Entrada similar uh, style. So that was 34.5% or 568 votes. That's a ton of people that use that, uh, that system. Um, so yeah, we'll, I kind of want to chat about all of the, the numbers with you all. Are you guys surprised at all by, um, by those top three? Joe? Um yeah, I guess, I guess as, as a top three, that makes sense to me. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe I'm a little surprised that harnesses aren't more popular than the, the integrated role. I, I guess I would have thought the harness was was the most versatile system. Mm -hmm. Although it's true that tonight I'm going to be sharing a uh, yeah, sweet role. I, I most often, I guess it's true, it's most often I'm using the harness for a flat bar bike uh, because it has that, that really modular sort of layout. So I'm maybe a little surprised by that order. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'm not hugely surprised, but I would say that's because I feel like folks like me who who were on the third in the third group are probably like not your um, average size like bike packer. So I think you know when you have someone who's got a lot of frame bag space, a lot of clearance on a seat bag, there's a little bit more. Um, flexibility around like placing items in different areas. So you don't need as much room in the front. Mm -hmm. um, whereas like I could not get away with uh, a roll. <clears throat> sure. I just, I need more space. Yeah. And it may be just for reference because we, in the first um, session, we kind of shared what 
what bike we typically are using. Uh, so Devin, what's like, what size bike are you riding and what, uh, bike is it typically? So, um, my first bike packing bike was a 1986 specialized rock hopper that I got for $90 on Craigslist. And this was like two years ago. So very fresh, but, um, and I added some Jones H handlebars. And so I used like put a bag, a big bag up front and then a sleeping bag on top and then used a large seat bag to fit everything. But I've never really used like a frame bag until recently. Mm -hmm. um, and then that was probably, I think that's a 48 centimeter. And right now I ride a 46 centimeter um, bike, uh, Kona Rove bike. And I now have frame bag space, but I would say that um, <laughs> My, my setup's been a little hodgepodge. Um, my most recent trip, I went to Cuba on a, a mariachi. So I had flat handlebars um, and used actually a Fabio's Chest with Industries um, handlebar bag with uh, Revel 8 straps. And then had a small frame bag, just because there's barely any frame space there. And then um, carried just a large like um, bladder backpack. So... Cool. Yeah. Sweet. That's good. Good to know for, for reference when you're, when you're chatting about your system. Uh, Miles, what do you think about the numbers here? Are you surprised to see, um, like, like Joe was saying that dry bag harness, not as popular? Yeah, I agree with Joe on that. I think the harness is like, it's always going to be my go-to. Um, I like, I've used kind of like the normal, um, the, the classic kind of roll style mm -hmm. that just attaches that's not very easily removed. But I think the harness setup is just, it's so simple, like nothing can break on it. And it's just, and you can take it into your tent at the end of the day, yeah. um, which, which I think is a major win. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on that, Jess? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm also, in, I, mine's the cradle, the salsa, anything cradle. So it's basically a harness. Yeah. Um, I love it. Um, I'd be curious to see like the geographical breakdown of those numbers. Ooh, I don't know if you yeah, have that, totally. but like, yeah, I would be kind of curious to see that. Too. Uh, like, especially with the, the, the third, number three, like that style bag. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't have geographical numbers and we did get a ton numbers. of other, uh, other, other uh, submissions and they, people like typed in <laughs> their style and a lot of it was um, kind of, they all would fall in uh, one of the categories that we actually typed up there, but um, we'll get into a few of the unique ones that I read through uh, at the end here. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the harness system itself, I, personally, I think it's the best just because like Miles was just saying, uh, you can actually, you know, use that bag for either like a bear bag or I use mine for a pillow um, or something like that. And you can bring it into your tent or bring it, um, you know, use it as a bear bag, which is kind of nice. Um, so, yeah. Uh, any other comments on that at all? Nah. Nah. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's unpack bags. Uh, just very quickly, I will say that, that uh, another recommendation for harness is it can be used at the end of the day to drop by the camp office to bring to bring back campfire wood, yeah. and mm -hmm. if if it, if it comes to it, you can you can carry a pretty burly box of box wine in in a harness back to back to camp. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then uh, Logan just reminded me. Yeah, six over sixteen hundred people actually uh, filled out that one question survey. So. Um, that's pretty, pretty impressive good. for yeah. short notice survey. So thank you all for doing that um, quick little study here. And we'll we'll share all the rest of the results before we quit here um, in an hour or so. Uh, cool. So who wants to go first? Should our honored guest go first? Sure. Devin, I had a feeling first? that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was easy. <laughs> okay. So um, this is a Bags by Bird um bag this is actually a custom tester that jay jay's local to atlanta um made for me um as a reference point i think this bag is like 15 liters um i've got about 14 inches um between my handlebars so pretty tight um space there and then i sit this 
on a um, Nitto Marks One rack. Um, so for added support, and I actually um, attach a sleeping bag on top of this because <laughs> I have no space um, with just some uh, bungee cords. So um, I think it'd be fine to share my screen here. Yeah. Know? Yep. Um, let's see, just so people can see. Oop, hold on. Ooh, technology. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't this is what that looks like just go. with a sleeping bag on top. Um, can y'all see that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of, for reference to, I'm five feet tall. So, um, <laughs> not a lot of space for a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah. Okay. So started so this bag has um also side panels these little mesh panels here um so i have in here um trusty sandals some trackers um these are kind of my go-to uh campsite shoes i also uh wear those with wool socks it's kind of a fashion statement there um got a beanie in here <laughs> um little carhartt uh, beanie that's really great for nighttime. Um, let's see, got a stove, little uh, for coffee. I really um, kind of a, I often rely on other people to feed me during camping or bring a lot of peanut butter and jelly. So coffee is <laughs> more of my go-to. Um, and then I keep um, an assortment of to toiletries in here. So um, some whites here got a bag of toiletries, which got some cocoa butter for a <laughs> lotioning, um, <laughs> some sunscreen, some bobby pins, um, emergency bug spray. And then I've also got um, some menstrual tools in here, um, menstrual cups, some tampons, because, uh, you know, that shit's real. Um, <laughs> toiletries bag here. Um, I actually uh, really like uh, men's deodorant, a little secret, all mm. stronger, smells really fresh. Um, uh, <laughs> contacts, got some Zycam in here, which is really important for like, you know, uh, like a cold remedy, uh, contacts, and then just some like toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, face cream. Um, got a sports bra <laughs> in here, um, more wipes. I put an extra tire uh, a tube up front um, just because, again, I don't have that much space. So um, my this is really just a game of Tetris, figuring out what I can fit where. Um, so I don't have this here, but um, I, that photo of my fully loaded bike does not include water. So like I'm putting water would go on those front cages, cage mounts. Um, and I really hate carrying a backpack. So um, I'm also realizing I have to rid myself of some luxuries um, because I'm smaller. So um, I just love wearing fresh clothes when camping, but <laughs> not been able to do that recently. Um, and then this is my tent in a stuff sack here. Um, I think this is an eight liter stuff sack. It's like, 12 bucks somewhere. And then headlamp at the bottom there. And then on the sides here, this is stuff and just, and I guess some people know this, but this is stuff I'm not like accessing during the day. So like I try and, you know, shove as much as I can heavier stuff here. Um, first aid kit um, on the side. And then I've got um, my beloved sleeping bag here. Um, on the side and yeah, that's it. So um, just highly recommend bags by Bird, um, plug local maker. I know there's a lot of great bag makers, um, but Jay's great. And uh, I have also carried 18 beers in here. Um, <laughs> uh, there was one casualty, but that's cause I didn't bring padding and I rode over a bump. The Atlanta mm. streets are really rough. Um, and um, I've also carried six bottles of wine. 
Yeah, so in case people need that. Um, and I will say that, yeah, it's, it's a delicate exercise. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, uh, the, the rack for me is super important. Um, I just can't, like, I have no clearance. Um, yeah. So that rack is a game changer. Um, I don't have a back rack yet, but I've considered that um, for like sagging with a seat bag. But um, yeah. So are, yeah, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Are you saying, so basically you've got the, because that bag could fit technically without a rack, right? It could, yes. Yeah. But, um, and you're saying it, it needs to sit on something or else it would slouch over into the wheel? Into the wheel, correct. Okay. And, you know, the Nitto Marks one rack says like the weight capacity is like six pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's way yeah. better than that. That's super conservative. <laughs> but sure. I also put a lot of shit on it because mm -hmm. I don't like my bulkier stuff has to be front or frame. Like my seat bag is like a towel and like fuel and like. It's just, I can't put a lot in my seat bag. So right. my heavier stuff is going to be in the front or in my frame bag. Um, so yeah, it's, I, the rack is essential for me. Um, when I was in Cuba, I ended up not having a rack. I have a Fox fork on my mariachi and like, <laughs> it was just like <laughs> the yeah. whole time. And, um, you know, I had those straps, but it just, going over like that gravel and dirt it was it was brutal and like i had fun but it was also like i didn't i wanted to turn on my shocks but i couldn't because i just didn't want to like disrupt the bag so right. um i think racks can really extend the life of um <laughs> what you can put on a bike as a small person um and i'm still learning but it's it really is a game of of random tetris so oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're always learning right yeah mm -hmm. so yeah um what uh what tent is in that was in that stuff sack i have a um kelty uh fast lane one it's basically like the rei passenger one it's the same thing except um i got it for half the price because um i got an industry code from work so Sweet. um but it's basically the um, one person tent and again because of my height i'm so little like I've had a two person tent that I could like almost stand up in. So I like the one person is plenty of room for me. Um, and it's, uh, I think it weighs about, I don't know how much it weighs, but um, yeah, it's a, it's plenty of space for me. I can like tuck all my bags in there and stuff. So, Sweet. yeah. Awesome. Do you, anybody have any questions for Devin? Devin, how do you, how do you attach to your sleeping bag to the top of your, to the top of your, oh yeah. yeah. So I use bungee cords, huge fan of bungee cords. Um, but I also know that like the Revelate straps, like all the straps are great too. But um, I ended up, so the, the bottom of this bag, I have um, these two Velcro straps and this little like, what looks like a, a wire thing that keeps to the rack. And then mm. I end up attaching the bungee cord to the bottom of the rack um, uh -huh. and then slitting it through the slots of... Um, like these slots in the sleeping bag. Yep. Um, and it feels pretty sturdy, but like, you know, it would make sense to just bring a quilt. Like, mm -hmm. I like luxury, the sleeping bag is comfortable, but like, I live in Georgia. I could probably get away with a quilt. I should do that, but like, you know, I am who I am and I like comfort. So, you know, I'm looking into quilts, but uh, it's it's definitely like my friend was like, "Can you see over that?" And I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> I can see over it." But it is definitely like it's it's just uh, you know, I wish I was like three inches taller, but um, yeah, it's not um, ideal. I did ride um, a mariachi, um, a harness on one. I did. I think it was the Revelate harness once, but like it just I found that I couldn't the bag was droopy because there was so much shit in it, you know? And so I think like the rack is just the way to go for me, but yeah, it's definitely like a, um, not an ideal, uh, place to put a sleeping bag, but I'd rather do that than ride with a backpack. So, yeah. 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 Makes sense. Um, it looks yeah. like, uh, sorry. It looks like streaming just randomly stopped here. So, uh, I am trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, you, YouTube's not even loading for me. 
Like the whole YouTube website seems weird. Is YouTube down? Got it. Kind of seems like YouTube's down. L okay. Lucas and so oh. some people are reporting that it's still streaming. Okay. Maybe we just keep on going. Yeah, I mean, we may as well just keep on going anyways. Just more people end up watching it after the fact anyways. So yep. even though we love everybody that's watching it live because <laughs> yes. you guys are dedicated. We appreciate you too. Um, <laughs> all yeah. right. So Devin, thanks. I, that's yeah. definitely yeah. an awesome setup. Obviously, you have to kind of make make it work with that, that small frame size. And it's a unique system with that rack and the BXB bag. Um, so yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah. And uh, I will say I do carry a large fanny pack. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that what we're getting into <laughs> next week, which is ex super exciting. <laughs> super exciting. <laughs> um, all right. Who wants to go next? Miles, you want to go? Yeah, I do. All right. All right. Um, let's, uh, I'll share my scre screen so people know what's going on here. Um, let me know when it's up. It is yeah. It's, there. yeah, it's there. Cool. So that's a, a YS7. It's a hardtail mountain bike. Um, so the, for the past two weeks, this has been the setup I've been talking about. So rear rack with a little dry bag strapped on there for kind of things that I'm not getting throughout the day and stuff that I want to keep dry. Frame bag, bunch of random stuff in there, including focaccia. And then, and then the front handlebar setup. In this picture, I'm actually it's using like a traditional roll style, but I'm going to be talking about a harness style because that's what I uh, usually use. So, kapow. This is the Porcelain Rocket Horton handlebar harness system. Um, unfortunately, they just announced that they're not actually going to be selling this item anymore. So, you, can, in. you can start bidding <laughs> on that one. I'll take whatever you want. You want. Um, so this is, it's kind of like a, it's a three part system. Uh, first, you've got this little waterproof kind of roll top pocket on the front. And that's just a roll top, like a lot of their products and a bungee cord closure. This is ultra custom, this dangly part. So you can't get this one. Um, and then this just buckles onto the front of it. And then underneath that is a pretty simple little harness system. So it's all just fabric. Um, it uses webbing straps to attach onto the bars. Um, and just like we were talking before, I like this because you can take the dry bag right off immediately and then bring this over to your tent or uh, wherever you're sleeping for the night. So uh, yeah, this is just a dry bag. Um, they had, they also, Porcelain Rocket sells the Nugget, which is this double-ended dry bag, which I like the size of it, it's pretty slim. And it can expand pretty big if you want it to, but usually I like to pack it pretty tight. So let's open it up. Raincoat. I put my raincoat in there um, for no reason in particular. Um, this is kind of, the dry bag in the back on that bike was more of like a, the stuff that I really want to keep dry, like sleeping bag and clothing. Um, this is kind of like stuff that might get sort of grimy. So raincoat goes in there because there's a chance for that getting gross. Um, that's just like a gore pack light one. I've got these neat little um, kind of knitted showers pass waterproof socks that I stuff in there. Um, yeah, and they're like, they keep your feet waterproof and they also work as like a camp shoe as well because they're knitted and pretty durable. So sometimes I'll just wear these around camp. I've got these outdoor research waterproof little gloves. So it's kind of the same waterproof level as the helium lineup, which a lot of people are familiar with, like really lightweight, but completely waterproof. And th these actually come with the VersaLiner glove, which is like a little fleece glove. Um, and this, I usually bring these, not the fleece glove, and just wear these over my cycling gloves. Um, nice to keep your hands dry. And then my tent will be shoved in here. So in this case, I just shove it in, uh, just like that saddlebag kind of rack setup I was doing, I just shoved in loose. So this is the uh, the tarp for, what tent is this? This is the uh, Marmot Super Alloy 2. It's a new tent that we're testing. And then there's the body, crazy colors, super crazy. <laughs> Looks like a clown's costume. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and then, and then that's just all shoved in there. And then kind of in the center of that whole package, in the middle of the dry bag, I have my thermarest. 
because uh, this is like um, kind of one of the more awkward things that I pack. Everything else is kind of loose and I can fit it around. But this guy, I like to keep it in its bag, unlike most of my other stuff, because it keeps it um, like hole free and uh, you want to keep this kind of clean and not broken. Uh, so then I just shove that in the middle and pack everything around it. And then I'll quickly show you what's in the pocket. This is always changing. So this is stuff that I can easily get through the day. I can access this with one hand. So um, depending where I am in BC, like where I am now, I have a little bear banger kit. So it's just like a little pen that launches a flare that explodes, which is pretty fun. I've only used it for, uh, for fun, not for uh, bears so far. Um, and some ammo. Uh, this little packable tripod uh, called the Ultra Pod. Uh, it's super useful, super tiny. And you can just like plop it around and take some pictures of yourself. <laughs> that thing is sweet and it's holding up my camera right here. Nice, nice. yeah. Nice. Uh, auto lock, little bike lock. Um, it just, that depends on the trip again. So sometimes I'm not gonna need a lock at all, but sometimes it's super useful. What else do I have in here? Rear light, so just hidden away until I need it. Oh, it turned on. <laughs> um, and then I usually have some sort of pocket knife or uh, a Leatherman, or sometimes even just a multi-tool in here. Right now, I just have this little little knife to keep away the uh, the grizzly bears. This will take care of them, no problem. <laughs> and then about half of that is maybe taken up by stuff, and the rest of it's just like food and snacks. It's just it's an easy place to kind of load up quickly with stuff from a gas station or if I was picking up some food. So usually it's kind of uh, meant for some snacks and stuff. And that's that. Nice. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's all packed. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. Or just like a lot of, even like a lot of smaller items. Yeah, those pockets, that pocket ends up being a mess. Yeah. And usually kind of like I transition things through the pocket and different places like frame bag, depending how it's going. Like if it's, if it ends up being that I'm drinking a ton of water, I'll often put like my water purification pump or the Sawyer filter that was in my frame bag, like up there to get, access it. Or if I'm like, uh, like Joe's and I trip in Arkansas, I was getting flats um, and I was using my tubeless plugger a bunch. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I transition that like up into the pocket. Um, it's kind of like it's my go-to spot and that changes a lot. Or maybe it's just full of Rice Krispie squares. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> no. Are you able to easily access that porcelain rocket from like just while you're riding? You oh yeah. Just, like, boop. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, it's not too bad because it's um because it's on a bungee, oh, it's right. pretty easy to like reach in front. And if you position this, I kind of ride it a little bit more on top of the the roll than kind of laying down the front. So when it's on top, you can open this up, and then this is yeah. just the roll top. Um, yeah. And it's it's deep enough that uh, once you open it, like even if you don't close it for a second, everything's not going to okay. shoot out right away. Yeah, right. That's kind of cool. I've actually. I've always steered clear of those. I don't know why. Maybe just because I like I'll like to see my front tire in front of me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but it makes it totally makes sense to. It's just like an easy add-on too. Yeah, yeah, and I like that it's removable because yeah. just like you said, like sometimes like if you're on like if I'm on like rougher terrain, then I won't I won't run a handlebar harness because I just keep it tighter. Because um, mm -hmm. really like tighter and smaller is always going to be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Any other questions for Miles? Miles, where is your where's your camera? I can't remember. You just you just wear it on a strap on your body, or where does it go? Um, I wear a, a a hip pack for my camera, so I have a oh, yeah. huge. Yeah, right, right. It's massive. Like it's it's probably as big as my handlebar bag setup. Right. Um, right. Force and rocket big dumpling with like a another padded insert inside of there, so it's like it probably weighs more than my handlebar bag too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What kind of camera are you? You carrying like a plain a, sheet DSLR? What's your? I have like a full size. Yeah, it's like a brick. Mm. It's like yeah. two bricks, and it's then like and I have room. Pounds. I have room for another lens in there too, so it can get oh, like yeah, wow. stupid heavy. But it's super safe there. Yeah, unless you fall, and then you're not so safe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Cool. So I'm just uh, reading. It sounds like we just don't have comments, but most people can see us live so uh oh. okay. that's a bummer because we really love comments but um we'll just i think have to live without them for the time being uh no comments on the youtube you mean yeah oh, okay yeah 
which is weird. But um, weird. yeah, some weird glitch tech. Uh, all right, who, Jess, do you want to go next? Sure. I would love to go next. Perfect. Um, cool. Okay, I'll do the quick screen share. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, there you go. Boom. Cool. Can you see that? Yep. So this is the bike and the setup that I've been going over these past few weeks. And uh, yeah, so drop bar system. Um, and that comes, I love drop bar bikes, um, but obviously with the handlebar bag, kind of like Devin was talking about, there's some limited space factors and packing can sometimes be a precarious business. So I have this um, salsa anything cradle and dry bag situation. And um, I like it. And with the drop bar bikes, it can also be a pain because you have to just like pack this perfectly even every time, which I seemingly never do. Um, so that can be a little bit frustrating. And this is um, this is packed for like a warmer weather trip. So when I have a warmer sleeping bag, this gets a lot fatter. Um, but in general, I really like this setup, um, just kind of with the whole cradle system. It's really easy and I can just snap this off and have the dry bag, which is waterproof. Um, also from Salsa. And I can just take it wherever I want. It's really secure. It doesn't wiggle a whole lot. Um, and with the cradle, I like that it gets my um, cables out of the way. So this is a ton of clearance, a lot of space for all your you know, shifting and brake cables and stuff. Um, very durable. And I have finally broken a part of it, which is right here. But even broken, it's like super solid. I still trust it. Um, so this is pretty much like the opposite of Miles' pack, like his tent and everything is up front, all that for me is in the back. This is all my sleep setup and everything I want to keep dry. Um, first is like the Diddy bag, which has my toiletries and, uh, Devin put me to shame with, with her list. I don't have nearly as many <laughs> fun things, but I do have the butt kit. You need your wet wipes mm -hmm. and A and D ointment. Ooh, uh, first cool. aid kit. Um, I also have like some patch stuff here for my thermal rest because that has definitely happened to me before. Um, and like gear repair tape, sewing kit. I've got some gloves, rubber gloves for blood or oil or both. Toothpaste, toothbrush. Oh, earplugs in this cute little kit. <laughs> Sometimes I've had to sleep on a train track and that's like fun. So headlamp as well. This is the BioLite 200. It's like amazing and very lightweight. So it helps. Um, hat, because helmet hair is real. <laughs> Camp skirt, ladies, take note. I got this for like cents at like a Goodwill store randomly on a bikepacking trip. And I gotta tell you, I just, I gotta do a skirt everywhere I go, you know? <laughs> um, smart wool, this is the intranet, their base layer. Um, it's like thick enough that I could definitely rock them as pants if I had to go to the laundromat and like do laundry. I would do that. That's not about me. Another base layer. This is super natural. It's also wool. It's kind of lighter though. Um, camp socks. I only bring two pairs of socks. One I'm riding in and one I'm sleeping in. Um, this is my sleeping pad. This is the Thermo Rest uber light and it is uber light because it is uber tiny it's not even like a full body length for me i wish you could like if you were a tall person i don't know if i'd recommend this but for me it's pretty nice and it's also very very light which is great how tall are you jess i'm five four so yeah. it pretty much comes down to like right below my knees and then i'll use this bag with like random odds and ends so i like, probably yeah. feet up right. that's nice tiny. good for the circulation though Right. Added bonus. Elevate. It's good. Yeah. And then I do have a quilt, which I love. Oh, mm -hmm. oh. Um, this is also their rest. This is their Vesper, and it's down, and it's really mm -hmm. comfy. And it's 32 degree, so it's kind of nice, like, 
three season, I can get away with it. Um, and I just like it for bikepacking because I get so grimy and like, I don't know, it's just the idea of like trapping it inside of a bag kind of grosses me out. So this is nice. It is down, so here in Virginia where it rains a lot, when it's humid too, on top of it, it's just kind of gnarly with down, but I love down and it's just the best. Um, and then of course my pillow, talked about that the other week, Seed Summit, it is so dirty, look how dirty that is. <laughs> <laughs> so much head grease. But um, yeah, I never go anywhere without a pillow. I don't know why you guys stuff dry sacks. That to me is just ridiculous. <laughs> I want a real pillow. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Nice. Uh, that's great. Um, that's yeah. I think. Do you ever feel like you're almost too warm in a 32 degree sleeping bag though, in like 70 degree nights? Oh yeah, but that's why it's a quilt. I mean, this yeah. thing is a pound, maybe okay. a little less, and. It's, you know, it's just there. So I might yeah. like lay on top of it. It's just so much lighter than a normal sleeping bag for me. I just, I'll still carry it. And yeah. yours opens up, right? Like that one opens up completely where. Yeah, it just has like a foot box and it's yeah. just like big old triangle basically. Mm. And, and it has sense. like a yeah. thing, like one string underneath. So you can slip your sleeping pad there. It's like. A nice thought, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. So yeah. it's kind of like there. <laughs> Which is great. I like it when it's like warmer and stuff. But yeah, I would get really cold, I think. Unless I had a, a puffy, maybe I could I could actually survive 32 degrees. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Do you ever, I've used quilts before and I sometimes I get really frustrated with, um, like if I have like shorts on or just like I'm wearing boxers to bed or something like that, the, the, fabric of the um the mattress does that feel weird oh, to you at the all stick the stick yeah. factor that's yeah. real <laughs> it's yeah. real yeah it's just Carry extra you live baby with. wipes yeah i don't know i mean they make those like those um like mattress sheets like yeah. a fitted sheet i'm not gonna carry that i'm just gonna suck it up yeah <laughs> it's just sleeping you know it's like usually i'm like so exhausted that it just doesn't matter where i am it'll happen you know Nice. Uh, any other questions for Jess? Jess, before before the commenting faded out, someone was asking whether the, that cradle system in rough conditions uh, shifts on the bar, given that it has some, some leverage out. Oh, yeah. I've never, I mean, I've, the only time I've had an issue with it was when I had that um, kind of Revelate pocket that you're gonna talk about, Joe. I had that on top of the bar um, on, on top of the cradle. And I think just cause there was so much weight and the road was so rough, it did eventually like twist down. Um, but I try not to carry a lot of heavy stuff up there. I try to just keep it light and then just, yeah, crank it down. I also like line my handlebars so I don't like rub anything I just really right. crank it and, and it stays up pretty good even on rough stuff. Mm. Nice. Nice. Cool. We had, um, we had one question here. Oh, I think comments are back. They're popping up. Yeah, there's. Yeah. I think we're back to normal. Nice. That's sweet. Thanks, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, what? Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, that's okay. Well, they're kind of general. So maybe we'll answer them at the end because there's a okay. few general ones. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Well, thanks, Jess. Um, who's next? I think Joe Cruz, Mr. Oh, yeah. Oz Trail. What's that shirt you're wearing over there? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's the Arkansas Trails, uh, Northwest Arkansas. So mm -hmm. um, the Ozarks, the Oz Trails, and these are some of the trails that Miles and I were on during our scouting trip of the relatively recent bikepacking.com route in that area. Um, hey, good people. Neil, will you pull up my um, my setup there? The first photo. Can you do that very easily? Yep, I can really easily. Yeah, and wh while you're doing that, I'll I'll. I'll mention that today I'm drinking Hermit Thrush Brewery uh, a Kettle Soured Pale Ale. And I know it's not a competition, but if quality of beer was a competition, I, I'd be winning until this week. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very frightened of Devin because, because I know she's got, she's got mad, mad good taste. Um, and so yeah. maybe you'll share with us in a second, Devin, what, what you're drinking tonight. But Southern, Southern Vermont Brewery uh, specializing in sours and uh, wild yeast. 
so so you're seeing on the screen the setup that I've been sharing with with you all these weeks. That's a drop bar adventure bike 650B wheels and one of the one of the crucial things about the front setup is that it has to fit in between those in, in between the drops of the bars. And so uh, I'm going to share with you how that setup works. And this is basically my setup for all gravel or or dirt road trips. Um, Neil, you could bring me back, and and I'll show people the the sweet roll. Right. And so this is this is the sweet roll package. It's um it's revel it's a revelry item. It's the large size, and what that means is that it has a, a larger diameter at the largest diameter and the largest width, but the width is only relevant if you're running a, a flat bar bike. So the, the idea behind running the largest size is to get the, the most diameter and fit the most in there. And I just barely have room from the top of my bar where this straps onto the bar to the top of my wheel to fit this large sweet roll. And then on the front of the sweet roll is an egress pocket and that that item is, as you'll see in a second, is is for storing waterproof stuff that I, I that's valuable to me and that I'll want to be able to take with me as I go into a store or uh, head head away from the bicycle. So again, the idea here is that you're trying to fit between your drops. I run 42 centimeter drops, and there's minimal flare on my my Spank Industry bars. So there's 12 degree flare. This package will fit between those drops and enable me to, to ride in the drops and easily work the, the controls of the, the levers. The way I pack this is sensitive to both the order of item as well as what's at the edges. And so I'm always thinking in terms of, as I've said before, in terms of what I might need access to during the ride. This is not normally a, a package that I'd go digging around in during a ride. As I mentioned two weeks ago, I keep some of my inclement weather gear, uh, rain gear, uh, booties, the, the sort of things that I might need very quickly at the, at the, the end of the, the saddle bag or the seat bag. But this includes at least some things that I might want access to. And that means that during a ride, I might have to tuck my hand behind the, behind the hook and reach in and, and grab something like a, a puffy. So the thing that's right at the end there is a Patagonia Nano Puff hooded jacket. And that's the thing that's gonna go on if temperature drops maybe it's not raining or if the rain is cold, then this is gonna go on under the rain jacket, which I probably already have on. So I want that at the, at the end of the roll. And then once I put that on, I'm gonna just quickly seal this back up again. But if, I'm, if, if things are, are uh, truly going sideways, tights. So these are smart wool merino tights Usually I'll wear these to sleep, but there have been times when I'll wear these under my rain pants because again, the temperature has dropped and, and I'm heading towards putting on all my cold weather gear. So that's again, towards the end of this roll and easily accessible. So I had to pack it in, in order to, to make this stuff um, ready at hand. After that, we've got stuff that I'm gonna encounter at camp. This is a search and state base layer. I'll usually sleep in this, or if it's a cool day, I might even I might even ride in this. Um, I do want to keep one piece of, of upper body clothing clean so that I can sleep in something comfy and clean. So if I've ridden in this, then my spare Reno T is going to be the thing that I that I sleep in. And if I have to end up circulating through those, then of course I'm going to do some laundry. I'm going to wash one of the tops and let it dry during the day. So. The, the, the theory behind the way I pack is that the front of the bike is going to have the soft goods. It's going to have my spare clothing. It's going to have the, my sleeping bag. It's going to have the things that I want inside my tent. And even though I won't normally take this inside the tent because it's covered with mud, it's had, uh, it's had splash lying up on the bottom all day, it'll be ready at, 
ready right outside the, the, the zip door of the tent for me to, to grab the things that I need in it. Uh, I have my spare padded underwear. So this is, um, what brand is that? I can't oh, this is, this is uh, Showers Pass. And so I, I'm usually riding in padded underwear, which means I have baggy shorts over them. And of course, the, this fresh pair is, is going to be worn in whatever context I, I need a, a, a fresh pair in. Usually I'll go a few days uh, before cycling into the, the brand new pair of underwear. Um, every night working over the chamois with a, with a wet wipe, just to be, just to be clear. Uh, toiletries. Okay, so maybe my toiletry kit wow. is a little different from, from the ones we've seen so far, but um, you've got a, a, cut off, um, a cut off toothbrush, uh, toothpaste, nail clippers, tweezers, uh, st saline solution, a little salt crystal for, for under, underarm owner, but nobody cares. Um, so that's toiletry kit that comes out at, at the end of the day with, um, with other camping stuff. Uh, spare top. So halfway through a trip, I like to, like to wear uh, something fresh and that will typically be a Merino t-shirt we'll share next week wearing during the ride. And so the, the possibilities of two short sleeve shirt and one long sleeve shirt basically covers all the all the base layer upper body stuff that I'm going to wear during during a trip. Continuing on, I bet there's a I right there's a there's a pair of merino underwear if I take a day off or if I'm if I'm hanging out kind of in in more civilian context as it were, I'll be wearing this pair of merino underwear and that pair of merino underwear will be over a pair of trousers. Uh, these are super lightweight trousers that I might wear uh, for going out to dinner or hanging out at camp. These are a pair of Levi's. They're they they sort of fake jean looking, but they're super lightweight nylon material. So uh, I'm gonna wear that just to just to feel normal, just to walk around towns and and feel like I'm not in cycling kit, or if the if it's gotten colder. Uh, a cap. Somebody mentioned um, helmet, helmet head, so got my NYC Velo cap in there. This might be under the helmet, depending on on conditions um, during the day. But if it's not, then at the end of the day, I'm gonna I'm going to put it on. And then further down in here is oh, we had a pair of socks. My one spare pair of socks. Uh, I'll cycle through those. The clean pair will be worn to sleep, but probably halfway through the trip, I'll get tired of the ones that I'm wearing. I'll wash those, put these on, and I'll sleep with the, the fresh pair on. And then all the next day, I'll wear the fresh ones while the ones I laundered dry. And then finally, there's the, the, the quilt. So this is a quilt in a compression sack. It's, a, it's an enlightened equipment, uh, 40-degree 40, 40 quilt. Um, I've pushed it down to down to freezing, no problem. It, as you can see, it gets super small in the compression sack and I wanna be sure that it's absolutely dry. So that's why it goes in the sweet roll up front with the other, with the other soft goods that I've been sharing. So that's the content, those are the contents of the, of the sweet roll itself. And attached to the sweet roll is the, the front pocket, the egress pocket um, with a patch from our friends over at, at Rough Stuff. Uh, if you don't know Rough Stuff Fellowship, uh, subscribe to their Instagram or order their book. It's a, a great record of traveling off-road um, in England in the middle 20th century, uh, middle of the 20th, second half of the 20th century, great images. So in the egress pocket, this is stuff that uh, I want to access either while rolling or on, on, a, on an hourly basis, stuff that I want to be able to reach in and, and grab easily. So I'm, I'm shooting Fuji and my XE3 with a 50 mil prime lens is the first thing at the top. I can stop, unroll, take a shot. That that's padded with uh, merino gloves and a buff. You'll remember from two weeks ago that I carry 
uh, nitrile gloves to wear under these merino gloves if it's really coming down and it's really cold. But in the normal case, I'll just reach in here, grab the merino gloves out and uh, have happy fingers. And same with the, with the merino buff. That's something that I'm going to pull out, wear as a hat or wear as a gaiter just to, just to increase my, my temperature range. So th that, that stuff is padding in the sense of being under the, the Fuji camera. And then uh, some spare TP. I'll probably have uh, another TP cache somewhere else on the bike uh, about this size or maybe a roll that, that I've um, acquired on the way to the trip, stolen from, from the airport bathroom or something, is, is the way I usually do it. Uh, there's a spare lens in here. And so this is a 18 to 55 zoom lens for the Fuji that lives kind of at the end, at the edge of the, of the pocket and it's protected from everything else because there's a, a liner. It'd be, it'd be sort of hard to see, but there's a, there's a liner inside these egress pockets, which is removable in that it attaches around the perimeter with Velcro. And so you can peel aside a little bit of Velcro and stick the spare lens and it just sits at the corner of the, of the, of the pocket, totally safe. And then we've reached the end here. So in the in the accessory zip pocket, I've got uh, reading glasses. Yes, I'm that age. And uh, and then uh, a baggie of my my travel essentials: uh, credit cards, passport, spare passport photo, um, cash. Right, that's going to go. Um, in this bag because it's going to be with me every time I walk away from the bicycle. That's the entire contents of this stuff. Um, and again, the idea is I'm trying to fit on a, on a gravel, gravel bike. I don't wear a backpack. So everything basically over these last three weeks, the audience has seen everything that's with me uh, except for the clothes that I'm wearing, which I'll, I'll share next time. And maybe a few, a few doodads on the cockpit. Um, we all know how I love the dangle. So, so <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Nothing, nothing dangles from my bicycle. Um, but there, there is stuff. There is some stuff that that uh, that lives on the cockpit, which I, again we'll share next week. But that's the entirety of the front roll. Again, that's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. Like all the action is on, on in this bag. As We've got a lot of action up front. I like it. Um, yeah. What? Uh, so, what camera are you shooting with again? I missed that. And what lens was it? Yeah, so I'm shooting with a Fuji XE3, which is their their rangefinder format, and I'm shooting a prime prime 50 millimeter lens or equi 35 millimeter equivalent 50. Sorry, the in DSLR it's 50 millimeter equivalent. Yeah. Okay. And you've got a what you said a 15 to 55. 18. Lens, 18 to 55. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you got to carry this photo stuff because, you know, my, the reason Miles carries uh, 18 kg of, of <laughs> camera on his, back, on his back is because Logan gets super pissed off if the photos aren't awesome, right? And so, like, you, you, know, you work so hard at the photos and you give them to Logan and he's like, yeah, they're all right. Yeah. <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> awesome. Um, anybody have any questions for Mr. Joe Cruz? I just want to echo what I think Logan typed is that you have a set of dress up pants in your front bag, which is like, they, like not surprising though, like quite remarkable. Um, and like just on brand, which I love. Um, and I met you, you know, I met you recently, but yeah, I love that. So yeah, it's like, I'd be walking around town in my long underwear and you've got like a full other set of clothes. Like, yeah. The dirt bag. Yeah. Right. Way to up the up the game. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. impressive. Thanks. <laughs> so modest. Awesome. All right. Um, I guess I'm up then, unless anybody has any other questions for Joe. What's in your bag, Neil? All right. Let's unpack it. So this this is actually. One of my favorite bags I own. This is the Revelate Designs Pronghorn. Um, it's super minimalist. This is a harness style bag with a dry bag. Um, so I'll just kind of unclip it so you can kind of see how it works here. So this is the dry bag. I'll just set this aside. And then this is the harness system. So this basically goes around your handlebars right here. Um, and you can kind of see there's some like... Uh, 
some foam shims to actually take it away from, sorry, so you can focus on it, um, to take it away from the cable and housing on, um, on the bike uh, and the brake lines. Uh, this, it has like a little stiffener in it right here, so I can't bend it at all really. Um, so it actually holds its shape when it has the dry bag installed to it, which is super nice. Um, so it connects around the bars up top and then around either the head tube and or the fork crown or head tube or fork crown, not both. Uh, and it's got a little daisy chain on the harness down here so that it can accommodate a number of different size bikes. So that is the harness. It weighs next to nothing. It's super awesome. Um, and I just keep it on my bike and I'll show you kind of a quick photo here. Do, do, do. Let's go back to, okay, so that's my bike loaded down. Um, and uh, if you haven't been here the past two weeks, uh, I am riding a full suspension bike. So you can kind of see um, all of that. That's very minimalist. I do have a backpack. You can actually see at the bottom left of the photo there. Uh, but I wanted to show you a different photo. Where is it? Uh, oh, I didn't have it selected. Let me open it up. There we go. Uh, it didn't open. Sorry, one sec. The anticipation. I, I know. can't do this. Well, man. I just wanted to show this the harness on the bike without the dry roll. Mm. So. I didn't have it open. <laughs> and okay, well it doesn't oh there it is. Weird. So that that screen share. All right, so that is the, the harness system without the dry bag. As you can see, I'm using it with a suspension fork. It works really well, super stable. Um, and yeah, like I said, it weighs next to nothing. Uh, so yeah. So yeah, basically uh, the dry bag itself, I'll just kind of zoom in myself here now. Uh, this is pretty minimalist. It's a 7.5 liter dry bag. Um, I don't have the other, there's a medium sized dry bag and then a large size dry bag as well. Um, this is the smaller one and actually it suits my needs just fine. Uh, I can extend it out actually quite a bit longer too if I wanted to. Um, and especially with like 800 mil bars, um, the bars that I'm using on my bike, uh, they can accommodate, uh, this bag can work just fine on that that style of bar. On a drop bar system, you might wanna consider maybe a bigger volume bag. So one of the larger, the medium um, size bags. So basically, I'm kind of like Joe here. I have some things up in the opening of the dry bag that I need. Uh, so basically I have my rain jacket right here. And basically, this is just like a super lightweight uh, Adidas rain jacket. It works really well, uh, no hood. So if, if I'm like looking at the weather forecast and I realize that um, it's probably not going to rain, I am more than likely going to bring this. I'll still, no matter what, bring a rain jacket because you never know, especially if you're in the mountains. If I see the forecast and it's gonna rain, I'm gonna bring like a Gore-Tex heavy duty rain jacket. Um, all right, this is then my rain pants. Um, so basically what I do here is I have, I kind of cut just like some really cheap, I think they might be Sierra design or, yeah, rain pants and I basically cut them to three fourths length so I can fit them over my bike shoe without taking my shoe off. I used to do this for um, racing because I was, I wanted to be as efficient as possible. Um, but basically I do it also because rain pants just do not breathe and um, they just work really well. And 
for the most part, like rain pants, they don't really do too much, but these ones kind of act as like knee warmers as well. So it's, if it's really cold, I'll use these instead of putting knee warmers on because knee warmers are kind of a pain in the butt to put on. Um, I still will carry knee warmers just in case it gets really cold and I'm in a bad spot. I'll put th these on and knee warmers on. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go here because I think my audio is a little delayed when it's a big screen. Um, and then next is my down jacket. Um, kind of like Joe, he had the down jacket in uh, an easy spot to get to, you know, just in case you're in a pinch and you really need to throw on the down jacket. Um, it's nice to have uh, easily accessible. For the most part, I'll live in the down jacket um, at camp, especially like when I'm in the mountains. And then, and then I'll have some gloves, just some like wool gloves. Um, overall gloves that will just go over my regular gloves that I'm wearing for the day. And then a wool hat as well. So this can actually fit under my, um, under my helmet if I need that. But if it's like a cold morning or if it's raining or snowing on me. And then basically the rest of this stuff is all camp. So we're kind of like looking at half of the bag. So for like a four day trip, um, I will be using uh, some, I'll be carrying a bunch of food for the entire trip or like three nights or something like that. So my saddle bag had, or my frame bag had um, a freeze dried meal and I have two of those in here. So this bag is going to get smaller over time. Um, one thing to mention is I'll probably end up maybe putting trash at the bottom of this or maybe try to fit it in my frame bag. But making sure that the bag actually uh, is full enough to fit the harness is super important. Um, so I may have to like move some other items into this bag, but usually I do a pretty good job of kind of thinking that through uh, every morning before I pack up. And then I've got a just a wool uh, t-shirt, just a nice uh, wool t-shirt to put on at camp. Uh, another great layer. And then I could also replace this uh, with my riding um, shirt that I'm usually wearing, uh, which is pretty similar. It's either like a, a wicking shirt or um, a wool shirt. And then I'll also just carry a buff, um, again, just to stay warm. And it also is used as um, pot holders because my, uh, my specific um, mug gets really hot. And um, yeah, so those work really well for that. And then last but not least, some boxers to just live in. And then um, some long johns because this is the other this is basically what I'm in all the time um, if I'm not in my bibs. Mm -hmm. And then I actually did forget um, another pair of socks. I usually, when I'm bikepacking, I'll carry another pair of socks. Uh, when I'm racing, I won't, but um, when I'm enjoying myself, I will have another pair of socks. <laughs> and um, that's about it. Just that extra luxury, exactly. one ounce of a pair of socks. Yeah. Um, it's, all about, it's all about space. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. And then yeah, I just wanted to. Well, yeah. Any questions or anything like that for me? I don't have any questions for you. Okay, thanks, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where, where are your street trousers again? Uh, they're on actually. Yeah. Street trousers. I don't wear them. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, yeah. I think I think I actually and I'm gonna unpack my backpack next week and it's got like the kitchen sink in it so I think it's gonna even everything out here but yes it's it's a light pack uh, it, between the three bags that I unpacked over the last three weeks there's not much in them nice. is no one carrying um, anything on their fork oh that's a good question yeah I have water bottle cages water bottles okay mm -hmm. cool. I guess I should mention if I'm doing, 
if I'm not on my um, my full suspension bike, I would be probably mounting some water bottle cages on my fork as well. If like I'm on a drop bar mountain bike, um, like on a Great Divide mountain bike route or uh, equivalent type of trail. Yeah. And then for people wondering about running water bottles on a suspension fork, um, there's a bunch of different options out there for mounting cages um, on your fork. So I think we have, we have a little article on that on bikepacking.com that you can check out. I'd say one of the most popular options is the little King cage USB bolts. Yeah. These guys are like a little pipe clamp um, with a little boss kind of welded right onto there. And they've, they've added since the new ones is like a little felt pad yeah. to protect your fork. And these are super solid because then you can kind of really dial in the position and like, they're not going to break. Um, and they're super but, affordable. I think they're like six bucks or something. Yeah. So. Super cheap. And you can, you could, I've seen people just like tape bottle cages on with like a bunch of tape because that's also super solid. Um, or just get your own little pipe clamps, which are like probably scents and then strap those on like that. I, I, I've used them in the past and I just don't like that additional weight up there, but if you're bike packing and you really need to carry water, it's obviously a, a great way of doing that. Yeah. Yeah. On the Oregon timber trail, we had to, I'd like, yeah. I think I had three liters of water, like more than that, probably like closer to four liters of water, like on my bars and on my fork. Um, yeah. And we would have died without it. <laughs> you didn't have any uh, water on your back. Did you? No, I've, I've never carried water on my back. Yeah. yeah. Not it's like tough you. to do, but. Yeah, sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> um, cool. Any? All right. So let's uh, let's just jump into just a few questions here. Um, let's see here. You're getting a lot about cable management. Oh. I think uh, this question is actually pretty good. Um, oh wait a minute. No, it's the same person. It's not on there, but I can. Oh, there you go. Oh no. I think here, wait, 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 I found it. Oh, you did? Yeah, so basically the main question is, um, would you agree that a saddlebag and a handlebar bag are two parts of your bikepacking bags that is good to have them to, it's good that they're 100% waterproof? Um, who wants to take that question on? Well, I think, for a lot of the bags, you know, the material might be waterproof, but once you, once you start sewing, those areas yeah. are not actually waterproof. So that's just a note, but yeah. Yeah. So um, that's something to keep in mind. I, think, I don't need it both. I just, my saddle bag, I don't need to be waterproof because it has my tent and kind of like how Miles is him with our bag is all the grimy stuff. My saddle bag is kind of all my grimy stuff. Yeah, totally, totally agree with Jess there um, that the the saddlebag doesn't, in my view, need to be waterproof and it's packed so that it's not sensitive to getting waterlogged. I keep the tent back there and I keep things that, that can get wet that are not so sensitive. And by the way, um, shout out to the question asker from Slovenia. Slovenia, one of the great places to, to bike pack for sure. Of, of, of the many, many places that I, I've visited, Slovenia is near the top. So great to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and yeah, basically just my two cents on that question. I would definitely just have one of the bags uh, as waterproof as possible, just in case you do encounter, especially if you're like a world traveler or something like that, just making sure that you can keep that sleeping bag, that down sleeping bag and or, you know, your down jacket um, dry is, is important. Yeah. All right, let's see here. What other questions? I think Anja had another question. Did you see that? That was the first one that you had pulled up. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was a question about weight distribution for a, mm -hmm. a, a year long trip for, for, you know, a super extended kind of expedition, um, which I would answer, I would say, and in my case, what I did was a lot of the weight was on my bars. Um, when I when I rode a, a fat bike through through South America, uh, Ecuador down to the southern tip, I, I had probably the bulk of my stuff 
on the flat bar sweet roll, which extended way out to the grips, right? So when you're not dealing with drop bars, you can make that arbitrarily wide. So I had everything that I that I pulled out of my bag tonight, plus the tent, plus food, plus extra stuff, and the other bags just picked up the slack from that. Any other thoughts on that? Weight distribution. Yeah, I haven't been on my bike for a year at a time, yeah. so yeah, <laughs> I haven't either. Yeah, but I've I like putting some heavy stuff in the frame area just because my center of gravity is fairly low. Yeah. Um, but again, small person problems. So. Yeah. yeah, I know. I think mine just my front end just ends up being heavier because I put those water bottle cages on the fork, mm -hmm. and then it's just it, yeah. Yeah. I think it'll often depend on the terrain too, right? So like, cause if, I guess on, if you're riding your bike for one year, you're probably going to be doing like a lot of gravel road kind of stuff and double track. Um, but for me personally, like on my mountain bike setup, I actually, I'm waiting the back heavier and I've also been doing like the micro pannier kind of setup on the back as well, which is a little bit more fun to keep the light or the front of the bike lighter, but that's, that's, that's like personal preference. Um, yeah. But it's going to, all the, all the weight's going to affect the bike differently. So that's something to keep in mind because either way it'll work really. Once you get all your stuff on there, it'll, it'll change throughout a year for sure. Yeah. Uh, my theory on riding a full suspension mountain bike uh, or just a mountain bike and riding single track, I definitely try to steer clear of loading a ton of weight on the bars just so I actually have um, proper use of, you know, the fork, uh, make sure I can actually see in front of me um and kind of so i can have fun under the sense <laughs> all right that's a good question there was a good question about um dealing with cables mm -hmm. cables and bar bags that's a that's a super common question yeah yeah um how do you all deal with cables even with longer cables i feel like a harness will destroy them <sighs> yeah, it's definitely frustrating from time to time. Um, every bike is different, obviously. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know who, who wants to take that one on. I guess, all right, Devin, how does your, um, what's your, like, do you have to, like, mix and match and, like, throw your brake line in front of your, that system? Or I guess all of that's probably hugged behind, right? Yeah, it's a lot of weaving for me because so I have these um, the similar sort of protection here for the handlebar, but then like that affects where I put my light, where I put I have a bike computer, like where I attach that and everything. Um, so I think I just have figured out that I also have two feed bags there. So that allows for kind of like other storage of items or sometimes my like GPS sits up there. But um, I find that I just have to kind of like tuck and kind of weave and it's never like the same, you know, it's not an organized process, right? So um, I find it tricky and um, some stuff just, uh, just hope for the best, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's tough. For sure. Um, I know like I, when I like try to replace cables now and um, not so much brake lines cause I don't replace my brake lines very often, but when I do replace cables, I try to think about that beforehand, you know, I'm like, all right, where am I going to end up putting this bag on my, on my bike? Like, is it going to be, should I make the cable really long or should I cut it really short? So it hugs the, like my head tube or something like that. So that's definitely a, uh, something that goes through my mind when I'm replacing my, my cable and housing for sure. Yeah. Good question. I, just to add on that. Cause he said something about the harnessing, like destroying them. And the, I don't think really the cables are going to like get destroyed too much from that. Cause they, they can bend a lot. Like as long as you're not kinking them completely, you can kind of force them into a position. And I, I think part of it is just kind of like getting a little bit aggressive with them. Um, and they can, they can rub on there all day long and that's totally fine. Um, but like you said, adjusting the, the length of them is probably the best way to like just go a little bit longer so you have more to work with. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna add to Neil's remark that I've in the past loaded up the bike with the front bag and then recabled it so as to make sure it had a, a straightforward path. Yeah. Awesome. Um all right. Well, 
I think, I mean, we're at an hour 15. I think we should probably just read off the rest of the, uh, the survey questions here and uh, call it good for this Thursday. Nice. Um, so yeah, so just to uh, kind of uh, do a little overview here. Um, so for your survey questions that you all answered, or at least 1600 of you answered <laughs> on um, our website, uh, the number one uh, handlebar style bag that you use is a uh, just a bikepacking style handlebar roll, um, kind of similar to what Joe is using in that the sweet roll. Um, that was the first sat, uh, uh, handlebar bag that I ever purchased from Eric. Um, I remember typing up an email to him saying like, "What should I buy, Eric?" And he's like, "Well, this is all I have, and all I have it is a small and a large size." So you get the pick. It was a really funny uh, email thread. Um, so yeah, that was 34.5% uh, and 568 votes. Uh, number two was the dry bag harness-like system, the system that I showed you, that Revelate pronghorn. Um, there's, uh, the, there's a bunch of styles like this, the, the front loader from Oveja Negra. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so that was 26.6%, 437 votes. And then number three was that classic saddle bar, saddle bag, uh, top opening, uh, long flat bag, uh, similar to the uh, Zeitgeist from Swift Industries or the BXB teardrop. And then number four was basket packing. Basket basket. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yes. <laughs> about Miles, Miles, just, like, here Miles I have one. just published that. What? What is? What are you uh, holding there, Miles? So this is Wizard Works um, basket bag. I think it's called the Alakazam or the Shazam. Or he has some fun <laughs> names. Um, and I guess I'll do like a one minute kind of talk on basket bags because they are super popular and for good reasons. Um, mm -hmm. So like the benefit is that you have this, like you're literally packing everything into a basket. Um, most of them are designed off these walled baskets, pretty much all of them. And we're coming out with a big index soon on like all the different options. And there's tons of options. Um, and I would say the vast majority of them have some sort of roll top or kind of like cinch top access. So you have this huge, huge entrance that you can shove stuff into. Um, or you can just carry receipts. That's good. Too. <laughs> and um, and so you can really packing it is the easiest thing ever. So you're not really too worried about keeping it nice and tight anymore. Um, the limitations of like a normal handlebar setup, like pretty much all the ones we just showed, are like completely out the window because now you're just throwing everything in there. You have so much more room to work with. Um, the big the big negative is that it's super heavy. So like the bags themselves are usually bigger. The rack some sort of rack system and then the basket. So it ends up being like a pretty burly setup, but yeah. it's great for like kind of gravel road, double track sort of rides. Yeah. Basket cool. packing. Basket packing. Basketpacking.com. So, and, <laughs> and, and you know, in the, in the 1930s and the 1940s, especially in USA, basket packing was bike packing, right? So on balloon tire, Schwinn style bicycles, definitely people were doing cross country rides or, or cross state rides with their, with their metal baskets. So long, long tradition and heritage in that style. Yeah. Awesome. So that was 10% and uh, 180 votes. So a lot of people basket pack, which is, we know, I like it. I need to try it. I don't have a basket pack set up and I need to get one. <laughs> Um, all right, number five was like a small bag, like a randonnée style bag up front um, or, and or paired with uh, front loading panniers um, or anything bags on the, on the fork. Um, and that was 101 votes or 6%. And then, and then I just put seventh the rest um, and there's a lot. So um there was, yeah. The, so can someone explain to me what a burrito bag is? Like I've heard it before, but there was a lot of burrito bags. Like a bandito? Yeah, burrito it's a burrito a, bags oh, in there. Yeah. yeah, it's just a circle. So really like, think of like, I don't know, a little bit bigger. Eh, it's like about about 
double. It's like this wide around, but longer. Okay. And then it just Velcros onto your bar and usually it has a zipper access on the top. So it's got some structure to it. And really it's meant for like, usually like day rides. Like I think the, yeah. gravel, the gravel crew loves these uh, little burrito bags. Is it like this? Yeah, that exactly. Is, that, that is a burrito, is a burrito, a burrito bag. bag. <laughs> a burrito bag, yeah. I think there's different names. Like Swift calls it a bandito. Got it. Yeah. I've been using that now for my social distance long rides for snacks I, for the full day. Okay. I actually used this on uh, the Arizona Trail Race um, in 2016. Uh, not this specific Andrew the Maker bag, but another one. And I liked it because it was just like, zip, <laughs> my stuff. And like I put my like arm warmers and knee warmers in here and it worked really well. So, all right, burrito bag. I like it. The size of a California burrito, bro. I mean, what did yeah. you do? I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. Um, cool. What other ones? We just had a few others. Um, oh, a lot of people were using the Big Agnes bikepacking tents uh, for their front setup. Nice. which um, like the new bike packing specific um, tent and pole system, which actually mounts directly to uh, your handlebars, which is really cool. And then somebody said a modified massive mid nineties fanny pack. And I yeah. really need to see a photo of that. Oh man. I, I bought one this summer, but then I ended up not keeping it. Um, they're huge. <laughs> they're pretty much <laughs> giant. They're super padded and yeah. super beefy fanny packs that usually have like a big top access. You okay. can carry like, you could carry like three DSLRs in there. <laughs> and they're like neon. Oh yeah. Mine was purple. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, just, uh, another one, just Jones bar bag. So using Jones handlebars, a lot of people, I, I would almost consider that a cockpit bag. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was something that I saw in there a few times. Did you see anything else in there, Miles? No, that's, yeah, that's pretty, I feel like that pretty much covers it. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Well, anybody have any more comments on handlebar or front bag systems? I don't think so. Awesome. All right. Well, you all rock. You, everybody that's uh, partaking in this e each week, Miles, Joe, Jess, and thank you so much, Devin, for uh, for coming on. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. This absolutely. Yeah. And thank you all for tuning in. I know we had a, a maybe a technical issue. I think it might have been YouTube's fault. I think. We're going to go with that and blame them for uh, the technical issues, but hopefully it uploads um, so you can rewatch this. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. Next week is a uh, cockpit and what's on the body. So basically we're going to talk about what's in our top two bags, STEM bags. Um, I know I'm going to talk about my huge backpack set up with a bunch of water and camera and food and 20 pounds of gear on my back which is not ideal, but I make it work for single track riding. Um, and yeah, so if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. That really helps us. Uh, and it will make sure that all of your photos pop up or photos, all of our videos pop up in your feed. Um, and until next time, pedal further. Thanks all for watching. Bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye.